Hi Saints, it's Sister with a Testimony, and I wanted to come to you and share with you what I sense the Lord is saying today. I keep hearing the word faulty foundation, and the Lord said no more nonsense, only focus upon the truth. So here we go, I'm going to give you this word that I feel uh, is appropriate. The Lord's just dropped in my spirit that men's opinions today do not concern him. It's like we should learn to burn. Saints, we have got to focus on our relationship with the Lord. Learn to burn without a churn. Wow, I mean, just picture that, like churning butter. Learn to burn without a churn. The concern is for you to burn with passion, not of an intimate nature, such as man understands or has perceived, but of a greater union. It was like so clear, a greater union. One mind one mind having the mind of Christ genuine commitment not just when it suits us so I guess Monday Tuesday time frame the Lord was telling me to just look closer at the faulty foundations uh, I heard clearly uh, a man builds his house on the sand I know that's scriptural uh, the winds and rains wash it away another builds his house on a rock and it is capable of withstanding the storms. The foundations, we have to look at the foundations. So as I was getting this word, it was really kind of cool because I could picture a little rowboat <laughs> next to a cruise liner or a tanker or a warship or a cargo, um, uh, what do you call it, aircraft carrier. <laughs> Can you imagine? Uh, just, yeah, I was seeing it. The Lord dropped in my spirit. I bring the vessel to the storm, Leslie. I form the vessel out of materials that can withstand the battering of life's winds, rains, thunders, lightnings, and calamities. The vessel that I form, child, will not conform to this world. No harm will come to a heart that is bent toward my love and devotion to me. A vessel with a proper foundation will not only withstand the pressure and force of the storm surges of life, but also the constant rocking, swaying, and sometimes violent deluge of waters. Some vessels are constructed for still waters in small ponds. Other vessels are merely for pleasure and recreation, such as um, a, bass fish, a bass fishing boat or a pontoon boat found in lakes where running waters do not flow. Although they're high-powered motors, skip them along across the waters. The storms will come upon them quickly and their capacity to survive the storm in the midst of its fury is not suggested. It is better to be docked for these tight vessels and out of the water possibly completely when the storms come. But even in that, the storms are gonna come. Whether it's a pleasure, recreational vessel or a small rowboat it, it was just so clear others are vessels that can go out into the oceans the oceans of life and although their capacities for cargo are limited they are capable of maneuvering in deep waters and they're capable of carrying much more cargo than the smaller vessels. 
The ocean storms are capable of sinking the smaller vessels when they're caught out to sea. Depending on those storms, saints, even the large vessels can be destroyed. The vessels that carry cargo, the freighters, the cargo ships, the fuel carriers, the tankers, um, these can withstand the ravages of the ocean storms due to the size and the design structure. These are those that have much sturdier foundations, much larger. They're manufactured with materials that seem indestructible. And I thought it came to me, just as men that built the Titanic said that it was indestructible, unsinkable. Many today claim that their relationship with me, their father, is indestructible. And I, I just hear clearly, let him that think that he is something when he's really nothing, take heed. No matter what your capacity is, if you're a rowboat, a fishing boat, a pontoon boat, a commercial fishing boat, a ship, a cruise liner, a tanker, a cargo um, cargo carrier, a warship, <laughs> any of these are common in their design. But some, some could never survive the ocean or the storms due to their capacity and simplistic form. Each vessel serves my purpose, says the Lord. A warship cannot fit in a farmer's pond, nor can a cruise liner sail the canals of a city. You're not going to find too many rowboats out in the middle of the ocean. I pictured a um, the little boats that are on the ships so that in case the ship goes down, there's smaller boats for people to get in. And just picturing that little tiny rowboat next to a big aircraft carrier or cruise ship, it's like, it's hilarious. And um, I think the interesting thing today would be for you to grasp, saints, that we all have a different capacity. We all have a different purpose, but we're all designed the same to serve the Lord. So it doesn't matter if you're a rowboat or a warship, serve the Lord. And, uh, you know, i got to have scripture to back this up, so just here we go. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 7 to the end so I'll read this to you saints this just really brings us all the way home for me because there are so many different capacities and uses there's so many different boats out there, ships we're all in God's service verse 7 but the end of everything is near so be sensible and clear-headed in your prayers. Above all, love each other earnestly because love covers a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to each other without complaining about it. Just as each one of you has received a spiritual gift, use it in financially providing for one another as suitable managers of God's various favors. The person who speaks should utter words inspired by God. The person who financially provides should do it in the strength for which God pays all the expenses. This is so that God will be praised through Yahushua, the Anointed One, to whom belongs the honor and the mighty sovereignty forever and ever. Amen. Dearly loved friends, don't think it's strange that you're being harassed by a fiery ordeal as if it were a foreign thing that's happening to you. Instead, be happy insofar as you are partners with the experiences of the Anointed One, so that when His splendor is revealed, you too will be completely thrilled. If you're insulted for the name of Yahushua, be happy, 
because the glorious spirit, the spirit of Yahuwah, rests upon you. If someone suffers, it should not be as the result of being a murderer, a thief, or an evildoer, or an interfering busybody. If you suffer as a Christian, don't be ashamed, but praise Yahuwah that you bear the anointed one, Yahushua's name. This is because the time has come for judgment to begin at God's household, Yahuwah's house of prayer. If it begins with us first, what's going to become of those who disobey the good news of Yahuwah? Also, if the person who is made right with Yahuwah is barely saved, what will become of the godless sinner? Consequently, those who are suffering within God's purpose, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahuwah, should entrust themselves to their faithful creator and keep doing what's good. Be encouraged, saints. We've all got a purpose. We, we can all float if we're boats. We all have the same design. We all have different abilities and capacities. Some have motors, some don't. But the Holy Spirit is the, the engine. I, I'd say the engine. So, yearn to burn. Don't churn. Burn. Don't be concerned. Pursue peace love each other, accept each other, forgive each other, pray for one another, especially today. I could go on. God bless you. I love you. Saint, sinner, soldier, sister, son, student, SWAT. All of us have a testimony. Go share it with someone. Be someone's encouragement. Be someone's answer to their prayers today. You're going to be held accountable all by yourself. I plead and apply the blood of Yahushua Hamashiach over you to hide, protect, and keep you. God bless you. It's sister with a testimony. Whew. To God be the glory.